Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? How is everybody tonight? Welcome to Rock the Mic. I'm so happy to be back after such a long period of absence. But believe me, it was something over which I had no control. But glad to be back. Glad to be back in the saddle. And it's a bit, I have a few nerves, jitters, but I'm sure they'll soon go away. Uh, my interview tonight is directed at the diaspora, especially those from St. Mary. Listen, our parish for years have lagged behind basically every other parish in Jamaica. In fact, there, there is an urban legend that Marcus Garvey once cursed the parish of St. Mary because remember he was arrested at the Port Mary Courthouse and the rumor is that he cursed St. Mary. Well, we are now looking forward to and trying to remove that curse. For those who know me, you know I'm not a real political person and I don't show preference to either party. But be, that being said, politicians are the ones who make the legislation and carry out the policies for a country and so forth for our parish. Tonight, guys, I have a very, very exciting young man who wants to be the representative, the PNP representative the House Representatives for Western St. Mary. And yeah, as you know, Western St. Mary is one of the areas that really is far behind. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'd love to welcome Mr. Giovanni Byfield. And here he is. Giovanni, how are you, sir? How are you? Good night. I'm great. <laughs> Good night. 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 Good for a long time. Uh, to all my viewers out there, whether you're watching it live or you're watching it on the replay, maybe a day or two down the road, don't forget to comment. We are both on Facebook and YouTube. Comment and share. And as you put in comments, guys, I'm going to ask that you be as respectful as possible. Okay? Please be respectful. No insults or anything like that. You may disagree with what the interviewee says, but you can express your displeasure in a proper way. So, Giovanni, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Good. Well, I would like the visitors to have an idea of who Giovanni is. So, would you mind telling us where you're from and a little bit about your background? All right, great. So, good night again to you, Sir Garfield, and good night to your listeners again. All right, so, as you stated, I'm Giovanni Byfield. I'm from a small community in St. Mary called Oxford. For those who are not familiar with Oxford, Oxford is between um, Bonnygate and Baileysville. So you, you go Baileysville and you can either go Carpies, past in Wycliffe Martin High School, which was previously Brimavale High School, or you can you could go up in Freehill um, to get to Oxford. I am a humble, down to earth youth, you know, um, came up out of the mud. I, I love people, I love I love family, and I love my parish to death. Very patriotic about it. I I think I am one of those persons who would willing to go the extra mile to, to help people and to help uplift my community and my parish in, in whichever way. So I attended the Free Primary High School. Um, after which I I went to Ochura High School, secondary school. I then did my degree at UTEC and my master's in computer forensics and counterterrorism in Singapore with Nanyang Technological University. I started out in the call center, so I used to work at Xerox and the WAF. Okay. I, uh -huh. And I was living in Smokyville with my cousin because he got me the job. And if you know Smokyville, you know taxi don't run go to Smokyville. <laughs> but, and, and let me tell you, when I was coming to Kingston during that time, it was in the, the the same time when we had the incursion, you know, Tivoli incursion, the war between the government. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and my aunt was telling me that you know it, it, it's bad, you know, I shouldn't go to Kingston. But then I was in the country, and you know, it's like you leave school, you have all these subjects and you have potential, but you're stagnant. And I look at my aunt and, and, and I said to her that Auntie Kingston you kill some and build some, you know. Right? It 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 is up to you 
to decide what you want when you when you go here when you go there to Kingston. So I came into Kingston. I came to Kingston and I was living in Smokyville, my cousin. And you know, it's a it's a one bedroom unit, like a studio unit. And he, he he gave me a mattress and put that mattress in the living room and say, yo, you know, I'm gonna start life. And having having you know given me the opportunity, I I, I didn't bother to the pressure him to bring me back down the hill every morning to get to work. So I had to put it on the So I, I walked down Smokyville Hill 45 minutes every morning just to get the money in so I can get to half a tree, so I can get the Xerox to clock in. Wow. You know, you know about clock in. And in the nights, because a shift system, and in the night when you're coming home, you, you, as a countryman coming to Kingston, you don't make any taxi see on the road when you're walking at night. <laughs> you know? When them one taxi come or a car come hide in the bush, don't make them see it. <laughs> yeah. So I did that. I did that to get ahead, and then I applied for the police force when I was in Saint Mary when I just left high school, and they eventually called me when I was in Kingston uh, working, and I decided that I'm going to take the opportunity to go there and get get a little bit, you know, more stability because the car center is not stable, and uh, you know. So, get my visa you know and and, and, and certain other stuff under under my name and it it, it, it was on the passion and, and i wasn't passionate about being a police officer i was serving the country but i wasn't passionate about the, the, the way i was doing it in terms of the force because of the mm -hmm. you know the limitations that it provides for you and my passion is it and so while i was in the force i had applied to digital to to be an engineer and you know they called me and i was working at digital and the jcf i was working at digital and half a tree police station i did that for one whole year straight so i'd be at digital between nine and five and i'll be at half a tree out of Augustown between six and two right so you, you, you know the, the, the little bit of sleep where i get between that time just so i just so i could get ahead in life you understand because you know you're coming up and it's a mommy and suffer it's an auntie and suffer grandma and suffer and i decided that i had to, to break the cycle by any means necessary against all the hats and so I really pushed you to, to really get an idea of, of what it's like to, to be outside of, you know, the, 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 the St. Mary working. And then when I came into Kingston, I, I decided that, hey, listen, St. Mary is home and that's where we need to develop, you know. I could have built my house in Kingston, but instead I built it back home because that's where I'm going back to it. That's where I want to develop. That is where I, I think. You know, a lot of the youths there, they are going down the path of either scamming, um, the guns, the violence, or just being there and they not doing anything. And I think as a youth, I, I owe a responsibility to, to those persons who showed me a different way in the community. So I owe a responsibility to those youth to show them a different way as well. So okay. it, it's, a, it's a long journey. It's a long journey. Um, I, I don't feel ashamed to tell anybody about that, um, about my journey. Because it is what it, it is what makes me the person I am today. That is what that is what that's a foundation that I stand on. That is, that is my history, and I will never forget it. That's All I, right. So, Jovan, since you've returned, since you've returned to Saint Mary, have you had any regrets about coming back? No, I have no regrets. Um, there's no regret, no regrets to going back to Saint Mary. So, like I said, if if you follow me on the media, if you follow me in in social media, you'll understand that every single chance I get on 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 on, on, on the TV or on the radio, the, the first place I speak about is St. Mary. First, first place. Right? Nowhere else. Because I feel like St. Mary has great potential and it's just for us to tap into that potential and to, to bring stakeholders on board like-minded people who want to who want to see the country move forward and i think i might not be the change but i think i might just spark the brain that made the change all right yeah good <laughs> good words man but germany now you're branching out into politics who was it that guided you along that path or who influenced you any past politician who really influenced you to you know throw your hat in the ring well, I am close to a lot of persons um, who are in politics. Some, I don't wish to say their name. Um, but I think my greatest inspiration comes from Michael Manley. And 
um, my great great grand uncle AJR Byfield. Um, mainly because of what he did and the social transformation that he he took on in the country during the the seventies. In like I said, if you don't know where you're coming from, you can't go anywhere in life. You can't go nowhere in life. Okay. And there was a time in this country where you would like myself and yourself couldn't attend, you know, certain school. It's only the rich people that could attend certain school and and Manly really, you know, he took that sector by the root and turned it over. And he gave youths like like myself a chance to attend a decent school and to get education. Because education is the only way to poverty for, for young black youths or poor black youths. We don't have any rich family and a rich uncle to depend on our any rich aunt to say, yeah, we're going to step out in business. So he gave us a foundation, which is education, and then you can do it whatever you want to do from there. Okay. Now, Giovanni, before we go any, I mean, uh, Giovanni, before we go any further, let's get rid of the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. You, <laughs> you are putting your hat in the ring to be the PNP np for western st mary and for those who don't know let me name you some of the areas that comprise western st mary you have gale boscobel aracabessa free hill stewart town Bonnygate, oxford jacks river and jackson i don't know if i if i've left out any area but retreat, labyrinth, retreat okay Charles labyrinth. Hills, mm. content, oh my gosh i left out <laughs> i left out a whole lot okay good my it whole dog no listen let's get let's pass this this point first before i did this in interview i spoke to several people some who were your supporters some who were not and the one thing that keeps coming up is that there are some people who think giovanni is not eligible to be in the race for an mp because they think he's not a member of the People's National Party. Could you shed some light on that for me, please? Okay. All right. Thank you for your question. All right. So, first, the issue of membership is between the Patriots, which I'm a member of. I was the vice president of the last year, and the party itself. Right? As a Patriot member, you paid up member that is, so you paid you in full and on time. And that allows you, based on our constitution, to be a member of the party. Now, the party secretariat and our secretariat in the Patriots were having some issues, right? Um, about that, which they have since started out. And the issue of membership is no more. I am a member of the party. And, and I also to say that I have been the councillor candidate for the gay division for the last September, it makes seven years. Right, and that in a sense is that you need a, you need to be a member to represent the party at that level as well. So that's outside the door. Yes. Yeah, so are you telling me then that you are also in the running to be councillor of the Gale Division? So I am the councillor candidate. You, you you are the councillor. So that means you could not be councillor unless you're a member of the PNP, right? Correct. Correct. So so we can put that to bed. Okay, Giov mm -hmm. Giovanni is a member of the People's National Party. Now, why do you want to be an MP? Why do you want to be the MP? All right, so first, I think that Western St. Mary needs better direction. I think that there is great opportunity in Western St. Mary and in St. Mary and all. Why I want to be the MP for Western St. Mary is I feel like I can move the constituency in a different way. So with, with my vision and the experience of some of the elders around, around, around my team, I think, I think what we can accomplish in terms of the proper branding of our tourism sector, meaning you have, you have a hotel in St. Mary that is named Beaches Ochres in the heart of Boscobel St. Mary. You have James Bond Beach in St. Mary that is that is that is branded and and and, and sell as B, James Van Beach Ochres and how they had a hotel a couple of San a couple of stores on the coast. That alone, um, as well as there is no linkage between these hotel industry and our farmers because Western St. Mary is mainly a, a farming community. And the only way Jamaica is gonna stand 
and its and, and its own is if we invest in agriculture, right? And I think that back then St. Mary used to be the hub for, but, 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 um, for agriculture with the banana trade, etc. Even down in Port Mara, that's where the, the port used to be when a major hurricane came and destroyed it and they relocated to Kingston. Other than that, I think the only time you see our representatives is when there's there's an election, right? They are representatives in Western St. Mary. They don't listen to the people, but they, they, they instead speak to the people. Democracy is for the people, by the people, and of the people. So it means that the people put in power and you should listen to them. And I am not seeing that taking place in our community or, or in the constituency rather. When you look at the roads, the state of the roads in Western St. Mary, I don't know if you ever walk to a riverbed, <laughs> but the state of the roads are worse than a riverbed. They better drive to the riverbed. Right? And if you are saying, if you are preaching development for any constituency, the basics, road, light, and water are necessary. And, and those are lacking in the constituency. Right? If a farmer is up in Bonnegate and he don't have access to roads to bring the produce out, or access to roads for, for, for me to come for the produce, right? They are going to spoil, right? And he will not make any money. And he will just think that he's doing this in vain, right? If you don't have access to proper running water, if we're living in, in 2023, it's flushed all the time now. Oh, people don't have water in their mouths, right? You're driving on the roads. All right, let me not say driving, because when you drive, you have light on the car. But for elders who are walking to church, right? The, the, the streets are so dark. Anybody can just pull them off of the street, etc. Especially in a time like this, a crime is so rampant in the country. And I'm saying that we and I'm not seeing where the leaders in Western St. Mary, whether councillors currently or the MP is doing anything to move the constituency forward in a meaningful way, right? You hear about the Enflame International Airport. When the airport is good, it is in Otrias. Like, for example, the Cleaner Maker Report say that. Ian Fleming International Airport will start to accommodate two flights per week. But it's Ian Fleming International Airport in Otrias. And then a few months or a few weeks later, there's a major drug bus at the same airport. And they said Gleena cared to say that there's a major drug bus at the Ian Fleming International Airport in St. Mary. It's in no. Mary. <laughs> when the news is bad, it is in St. Mary. But when the news is good, it's in Otrias. So what it does, okay. it demoralizes our people into making us feel like we are nothing. And we have to change that. Right, because if you look on the coast between White River and Galena, every project the potential is so great, but because we are forcing everyone to believe that majority of our products are in Otras. When they come to Jamaica, they look they look in Otras or in Saint Anne, right, and come into Saint Mary and explore. Look at Robins Bay, for example, so beautiful. You understand? I feel as if that we need to push development for Saint Mary. And find leadership and leaders who are willing to listen to the people and to develop the parish in a way where everyone benefits. And I think that I'm that person. Uh, you think you're that person? Oh, <laughs> all right. So, so my view: if you were to say win and get through to be MP, when it comes to agriculture, when it comes to agriculture, yeah, you're talking about roads and stuff like that. But do you have any other plans? To move agriculture forward first i'm going to ask you about agriculture you want to take that and then you can go on to education and maybe youth and sports the choice is yours which one do you want to deal with first all right let me just face, let me just face them as, as you as you mm. mentioned agriculture mm. first right like i like i mentioned just now agriculture is the biggest earner for constituents or individuals living in western st mary However, the access to market is an issue, one. The access to roads is an issue, two. And access to modern farming techniques, three. That, that's, that's the issue, right? Gone are the days. Gone are the days when farmers used to, to use hoe and fork and pickaxe. I mean, they're still using that. But those are for background or backyard farming. Mm -hmm. The type of farming that Western St. Mary can push is it, it it requires more investment right if you look st mary was once a parish of banana right 
there are only a few persons in St. Mary farming banana right now, or in Gale. There are only a few persons in Gale farming banana right now, right? So, like I said, what I will do in terms of agriculture is to promote agriculture as one of the major drivers for economic development for the constituency. However, to do that, you need to first provide access to the markets. If there is no access to market to get the produce out, right, then we're going to have a challenge. No, who is our target market or who should be our target market? It's, it's going to be a policy shift because politics should be policy, right? And the policy that I would lobby for or create or, or bring to parliament is for Beaches, Beaches Boscobel, Couple Stowals, and San Susi, and all the other small villas on the coast to take these produce from persons within the constituency, right? So that we have the, the economic activity in the parish moving from, from farm to resort or to small businesses and, and, and so on, so that the, the, the parish can benefit and the citizens of the parish will feel like we can farm because we know that these hotels are going to take our goods, right? Rather than, rather than them importing everything from Canada or, or Europe. What are some of the crops that you would focus on? What are some of the crops? Not just banana. No, not just banana. So we would focus on tomato, um, pepper, papaya. Papaya. I have, I have, I have a, a, a virgin of mine up in Rumble right now doing papaya. A young youth like myself. Can you imagine, Sir Garfield? A young youth like myself in farming, and this guy is making crazy amount of money, right? So papaya, melon banana um pepper sweet pepper tomato cassava um pot potato right all and we and we have crazy amount of aki trees in in saint mary mm -hmm. right and aki and saltfish the national dish a lot of americans come to Dominican and just want that and when they go for, when they look for aki for the tree they must have a rat now for the tree them you understand wow how do we re redirect those into, into money-making um, ventures or avenues? And then not only that, I, I, there's, a, there's a factory in Trinity that I'm close to, and a good friend of mine now is going to be doing um, production in terms of, like, if you have a lot of breadfruit, he's going to take that from you. If you have a lot of peppermint, he's going to take that. So we're going into processing now. So we're, we're not just saying that we're going to... To, to, to purchase the breadfruit to roast it. No, we're going to make breadfruit powder so that it can get flour from that. You know, so we're going into processing as well. And if we have three good factories like that in St. Mary, trust me, development in agricultural sector will be booming. Booming. All right. You mentioned that education is one of the the main avenue to success. What mm -hmm. would your, be your plans for you know improving education? All right, so first, in, in Western St. Mary, we have uh, Arakabesa High, Iona High, Taki, Brumavale, Arucliffe Martin, and Karanal High School, right? What we see is the, 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 the turnout in terms of who matriculate into university from St. Mary is really low. What I am lobbying for, what I would lobby for, is for an open campus be placed centrally, either between, I would say in St. Mary because I'm from St. Mary, but St. Anne people would say otherwise, but I would say St. Mary. The issue is that a lot of these youths from high school, they leave high school and they have CXCs that will allow them to matriculate into university. The thing that mommy or daddy cannot afford is university um, tuition, boarding and an expat a meal an extra meal if we had an open campus a ue open campus or a utec open campus or ncu in say for example up by going up buccaneers there white all there crazy amount of land space right underutilized if we have an open campus there these youths the mommy will find tuition knowing that them son or them daughter come back home and it's them cook pona flour or pona flour. The access to higher education in Jamaica or in St. Mary is what is lacking. Right? And I would definitely invest or put policies on the table to have them bring an open campus centrally that our people.
can access. And persons will say, hey, but there is Manig, or there is Brownstone Community College. And I would say, yes, there are those. But I will also say, Jamaicans are proud people. If your child does PEP and she pass for a, a lesser school, and you ask them, which school you pass for? That child will not be picked to study pass for Brumaville or one of those lower schools, according to people. But make them pass to St. Mary's or like Hilda's or Westwood. Yeah, man, I got Mary's, I'm man. I'm not got Hilda's. I'm not got Westwood. That's just the pride. That's just a pride in us. So and nothing is wrong with money or nothing is wrong with 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 Brownstone coming to college. But persons have this pride and this this, this, this enthusiasm about going to a U or a U Tech or a CMU or a NCU. They feel, you know, they feel big. You understand? And also, I think the teaching technique, we, we are now using a teaching technique that was designed over 60 years ago to solve a problem. Then we need to develop new teaching technique for, for, for these youths today, right? Would you but, expand on that for me, please? But then majority of what I learned in school was theory-based. Read, 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 and go, and go study for the exam and pass it based on what you remember, all right? You don't use any of that in the working world. We, we are not doing enough research and development in schools. We are not doing enough practical in schools. Right now, I want persons to install cameras and, 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 and internet stuff, and you can't find them because they don't know how to put the ends on a wire, right? In IT, in IT class, the teacher to type a letter. You should learn that in English class. <laughs> you follow? In IT class, they should teach you how to pull down the computer and take out the hard drive and take out the memories, right? And teach you how, how the computer works and teach you how to make one, one, one Cat5 cable. We lack, we lack those. And so when, when we have to be importing persons to do IT work or fiber work in Jamaica, it is sad because we don't have enough institution in Jamaica to push where the world is going. The world is going to AI. The world is moving to robots. The world is moving in a direction where you're going to have less people, right? And more machine, but we're going to still need people to control the machines, right? So the, 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 the techniques that they're using now in schools, and also in West, for Western St. Mary, I would definitely lobby for them to, to, to promote agriculture as a business more, and not just as a dirty farming or the dirty, dirty and farming. Because some of the richest person I know, they're in agriculture, right? Okay. So I think there isn't, there isn't enough being done to promote that in our high schools. And if that, if that were done, you'd find that a lot of these youths, when they leave high school, they would start to venture into little farming as well. Because all we teach agriculture today, we teach agriculture like it is a job that no one wants to do. We don't teach it in a way we say people need to eat. You can make a business from this. You can start to supply. When you're going to the supermarket, they might say them pretty standing and them pretty fridge with all the fruits. I'm like, where did them come from? They come from the farm, right? And we go and take them up. You can be the man behind that farm making a lot of money okay. and moving a lot, a lot of that produce. So I think we need to definitely push agriculture more in school as a business. Let me ask you, Giovanni. Uh, schools in western st mary do you think we get the best teachers do we think we're attracting the best teachers for schools i can comment on my experience i i think when i was going to primary school the teachers were great and they are still a majority of them are still there um at free primary and they were great in i think the teachers generally are overall are great in the schools I think the teachers lack motivation and motivation comes in two ways it comes in better pay right uh, you recently would see where the minister of finance and, and the jta was back and forth back and forth back and forth i'm not even sure teachers those teachers were supposed to be paid about five days ago i'm not even sure if they get paid today as yet so those are some of the things that that cause our teachers not to perform to the best of their abilities i think the teachers are great I think the resources are lacking and, and there isn't enough motivation in terms of the salary that they receive. Because at the end of the day, you're putting out so much, the kids are unruly, and you're trying to bring them and break them in a certain way, but yet still, you're not being um, properly 
um, compensated. I you don't have the you don't have the resources where you're supposed to. Have. Sometimes I go to some of these schools and I see that I let the children the teacher has to sit in. It's deplorable. And I think that the government need to do more um, for for these schools. And I'm not I'm not just blaming the head of the government because we elect a, 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 a MP to lobby on behalf of the constituents and lobby on behalf of, 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 of the people who, who put them in power. You're not seeing those being done. So I think the teachers are great. I just think they need to be properly compensated. I think that they need to um, provide be provided the proper resources to carry out their functions. And I think that they need to create a more dynamic um, environment for them to, to, to try. All right. Good point. No. Like every other parish, we have a ton of young people unemployed, not doing anything. Mm -hmm. What plans would you have to keep some of these youngsters engaged? What plans would you have? Keep them occupied. Right. right. So unemployment is one of the biggest issues facing Western St. Mary. When you, when you, when you traverse the, the communities, you'll see a lot of youths on the roads um, smoking weed. I don't have, have any problem with weed, though. Um, smoking weed are there's on the corner doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Just the other day, the government made a move to remove all the the, the fees from heart to allow you to enter heart. Not like the, that, that the, the fees were, were, were that bad before, right? I think art is not performing to its purpose. So you will send a youth to heart and they will they will they will go and then. Art should also assist with placement. Now, it takes about eight to ten months or even two years before you get a certificate that is one. And then they just let you go into the field without even placing you. Right? So I feel like what we need to do first is the institutions that will allow these youths to, to move and to develop. We need to definitely provide, you know, better guidance and vision in that institution. So like art is one, for example. If we start the process from education, like I said, you will have a lot of a lot of youth now being diverse and dynamic. So if we move schools to be more practical, right, and youth will, will start now to, to lay blocks and to put up sheet rocks or drywalls or the plumbing. When we say persons can be self-employed and make a lot of money, so they don't have to really go into into a, a a bank to work or into into parish council or, or, or at the hospital right we need to just provide because everyday houses are being built right but we are not providing the, the, the teachings or, or the necessary tools to get these youths to a point where they can go out and build a house on the moon um the, the, the marijuana industry every day we see you sit down and we we'll say oh then you have one marijuana and them they're high class and you know the, the, the usual terms. What if we could redirect these youths into say, watch this, you like marijuana, okay, we are going to provide a license to, to this. So register our business, we are going to a license, and then we are going to start up on the marijuana farm, we are, we are going, we are going to a start up in that way. So persons, we can start now to, to push you to, to sell your herbs to either, you know, kaya, herbos, or, or jacana, etc. right? use what they love to make them make the money right and take them off the streets that is one rather than you what i see now is that every five years when election call the politician come demand them five thousand dollars to vote for them i ain't see them again until the next the next five years right thousand dollars a year them are, them are the people and live off of. the, and if and if you preach if you go to them and preach hey we are going to develop a factory here so that you can get work no one vote for that you know, until them broke again and, and they want some money. We need, uh, if, you, if we rightfully want to develop the country and the constituency, every politician, whether you're on the government side or the opposing side, need to preach the same message. And that message is that we're going to put institutions in there to allow youths to make it up for them own. I believe in teaching a youth to fish instead of giving them a fish. Right? That is, that is the general... Um, plan it's bigger than that it's going to take a lot of dialogue um to to really get these youths to come on board the hotel industry now is doing a good job in terms of the amount of things that they take in into the program also i started out in the call center and i think st mary deserve to have a proper one of those large call centers 
right? Because flow has a ring around the country, so the, 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 the access to the internet should be a problem for them to do what they need to do. And a lot of these youths that are leaving out of high school, they have TXCs, English and maths and, and so on, that will allow them to go and speak on the phone. And you can make money in the call center. I know a lot of big people who leave the call center and make money. You understand? Bring a call center to St. Mary. One is in Otreas, right? Bring one to St. Mary. Allow these youths that are leaving the Mary's eyes who can go to UA, the, 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 the Taki, the, 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 the Coronal High School, the Rockabessa High School, allow them to go into the call center and start them life and, and start to, to, to fund their education. You understand? Save a little money and fund their education. Rather than, I see that a person now leaving Western St. Mary to come into Kingston to work in the call center. Why can't the MP lobby for a call center to be in St. Mary? So that is you can stay in St. Mary. They'll be, they'll, one, they'll be making more money because they don't have to find any rent. And the call center pay is not that great anyway. So they'll be making more money because they have to find any rent. And they could cook the food and care that work, right? Etc. And then and then they can they can fund themselves because you have to start somewhere in a circle. You have to start somewhere, right? You have to start. No matter how, no matter how slow you go, you could have crawl. You could have hop. <laughs> yeah, you got to start but somewhere. I feel like it's not. I feel like the youths is is five percent of the problem. I feel like the institutions and and the policies that are crafted is is ninety five percent of the problem because there, there are no policies crafted for youths. To, to 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 move into. If I didn't come into Kingston, I wouldn't I wouldn't have a life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I would, maybe I would be one of them, right? And so majority of the youths that you see make it out of the parish or the constituency, they have to move out. It is just that the heart that I have, I have to move back in because I love my part. That's where I'm going to live, right? And when I walk through my community, more to feel everybody energy and feel so everybody all right you can buy me a guinness and have to buy me a guinness every day because you are doing something but the institution needs to come closer to the people if the institutions don't come closer to the people because let me tell you when i when i go to the constituency you know every day you know somebody say yo you can't get me a job you can't give me a work you can't give me a work that is it they want to work they want to work they want to work right and yes i can give you a work but the work is in kingston okay you understand? Yeah. I can I can make your technician at digital right now, but it is in Kingston. Kingston. You understand? I can get in the call center right now, right as we speak. I can get in any other call centers, but that is in Kingston. I will right? need it in Saint Mary. I will need it in Saint Mary. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here talking with Giovanni Byfield, and Mr. Byfield is aspiring to be the People's National Party representative for Western Saint Mary. No, Giovanni, the big three. What would you do? Light, roads, water. Mm -hmm. What would be your plan? How would you tackle these issues? First, I would start a road. Yep. Or yeah. so-called roads. <laughs> I think I think that I've I've lobbied so much for roads. I call power 106 every Tuesday. When the NWA Steve Shah is on, I call um, uh, my good friend Dervan all the time when he's on. Both set up the story. I I write in the Observer, I write in the Gleaner, write on Nation when I'm on TV. Let me tell you, roads, farm development perspective from a development perspective, roads are very crucial in the community, in the constituency. It is the access. It is the movement of goods. It, it is everything. If a house is, 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 is on fire right now up in Hoxford, it will burn to the, to the ground before the, the fire brigade from Port Mary gets there. Right? So roads are very, 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 very important. I think, one, the way the roads are built, they're not built to last. They are built for the next contract. Right? And we need to move away from that. We need to put policies in place and to supervise them, right? To ensure that they are done properly. Properly. Because we can't be fixing the same road every six months. That money could be redirected to the developer educational institutions in Western St. Mary. If you look at the highway that was done between, I would say, let's start between Ochres and, and Portland. That, that was done a long time ago. With little to no maintenance. The only maintenance that you might see on that road is, is the bush on the roadsides. Because it was done properly. That is good investment for money, right? Now, 
I see them now in Western St. Mary. They dig out the patrol, right? And dig out on square. So they organize the they, they organize the patrols in squares and rectangles. <laughs> right? And then after organizing the patrols in squares and rectangles, you have a little van come with a little mall and sprinkle it out and sprinkle it out of the patrol and then put some asphalt over it. That don't last three months. As the Korean fall it gone. Don't. And then the people are back to the same thing. It's like the people don't deserve better. And I say to myself, I want to be in that seat to see why these roads can't be done properly. Right? Remember, you know, every day we complain about tax and people say inflation, food prices rising, but yet we are waste money from fixing the same road four, five, six times per year. Right? When we can get it right and done. One of my main priorities is to invest heavily in the roads in Western St. Mary. If when when I am the candidate or when I am the MP <laughs> or in the gay division, if they call a local election first and I become the councillor. Because the roads are crucial. The roads also serve a purpose for economic activity. If I keep a party up at Oxford. I may have some bridging of Port Marion Road, but they're not coming on my party. I'm not going to sell a back like NEC. I'm not going to sell a back like Rum. You understand? Because the roads are deplorable. So no one, and it's the same thing for farming. The roads are so bad that a man don't even, don't even want to bring him bus to come, come around to come pick up my papaya from my virgin. My virgin will find a way to get it out for himself. Okay. okay. You follow? So I would first invest heavily in the road network in Western St. Mary to allow persons to move and to allow the economic activities in the country, in the parish to function properly. Because you're coming from Kingston, a lot of persons used to back in the days when they're coming from Kingston to get to Gale and normally go to Sunside or Preston and Bonnegate. So you find out the shop them you now in a Sunside and Preston with a, with a normally sell something. You could have put out some vegetables from the front and a man could have buy a pound of yam from you. You know, a pound of rent a yam from you, or a pound of, a pound of you know, Irish potato, etc. on his way home. That, that's not happening because everybody's going around the coast. They are going okay. around the coast, right over to get to their host. Okay. Because the roads are the problem. And we need to invest heavily in, in, in the roads. And, and that is a, a top priority for me. And the next thing, light. Yep. I I have started because I don't, like I said, I love my parish so much. It's not about the politics. For, for, for some people, it's about the politics. Right? It's about the politics. It's about the propaganda. It's about calling my name. And that's okay. All publicity is good publicity. Call my name. All right? I have started to installed street lights in some years of my yes I, yes i saw that i saw that on a face your facebook page of where did country. you get these solar things from so i have i have connections in 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 the city of persons who they like what i'm doing they love the development and they just come on board and donate stuff to me okay mm -hmm. right so i i did two down in uh, Puss Gully or Baptist Street as a correct name, but persons might familiar with Puss Gully. Puss Gully. <laughs> I just did one over in Carter Town today in Gettystown, mm. right? Today. And I have about seven more to do in and around Oxford, Malines, and Freeland, Top Oxford. So I'm not waiting on, on JPS or the council who should be lobbying for streetlights to come in and, and, and install these. Whatever I can do for my community, because that's my community, that's my parish, whatever I can do for it, I will definitely do it for it. So it's not about competition, right? I, like I always say to people, I come from a, a small community, you know, poor family, all out. So I'm not doing this to impress or be in any competition with anybody. The aim is to develop my community and change the storyline and fight battles that my parents never want. So that is that is the aim to make my place better. And these street lights they, they serve three purposes. They deter crime because when it's dark, a man can rob you. Right? A man can lay with you and pull up on you. So they deter crime. They allow persons to, to, to feel safe in the community when they're moving from point A to point B. And they prevent accidents. When it, when the community is properly lit. A car will see what is on the on the on this the sidewalk, or you can see better. You understand? And they also provide proper aesthetics for the community. When you have street lights in the community, you know, look, man, when I drive, I see light from all the light posts or every other light post. It make the community look refreshing, rather than you go to a dark community like you're going on in a dungeon. Right? We need to move away from that, man. This is 2023. I haven't gone to any developing country, whether Caribbean or otherwise, and see these things taking place. And we Wait. want to do first world. 
I was talking to somebody the other day, and they said in Bonnie, is it Bonnie Gate? You right. set up, you set up public internet. Explain yeah. that for me, please. All right. So I'm a technical person, and I, I love to make changes that would benefit a lot of people, and I will continue to do that in my life. So when before the last election, right, I went to Bonnie Gate when I was running for council and. I like to listen to the people. So I had a meeting with the people and I listen to the people and I ask them, I don't know what your community need because I'm not from your community. So I, I went into the community and I asked them, what are the needs of the community? They said right now, one of our biggest challenges is internet because majority of the youths, they have to leave Bonnegate and like on a Saturday to go to the library in Port Marion, it is far and there are only a few taxis that are in Bonnegate and it is not safe for these youths. So I, I said to them, I will ensure that you get the internet connection. And they thought it was an election promise. We lost the election in 2020 and I, and I, I came through on my promise. And that, that was in the heights of COVID-19 where the COVID-19 caused a technological divide between urban and rural areas in terms of who, have, who has access to the technology, meaning who can access the internet because schools went online. And so I developed a wireless internet network. It's a, a, a postpaid service. So you pay a monthly bill for the service. So I developed that, that network. So I have a top in Bonnegate, 350 foot tall. And that takes the internet connection from Cooperzip in Kingston wow. um, to Bonnegate. And then we broadcast that to mini towers, our slaves, because it's a line of sight service. So that the slaves mm -hmm. now bring the connection closer to. The, the, the customers we have a lot of customers on our network who purchase the service from us but then i realized that due to covid 19 a lot of youths couldn't really afford it a lot, of, a lot of household couldn't really afford it and because of the development that i wanted to create i say to my team that we're going to do some community hotspots so we have one in jack River, we have one in bonnie we have one in mile gully we have one in free hill we have one in Derry, and we have one in barclistown Right, which provides access to those youths who really and truly can't afford it. And a, and a, and a, and a weekend, or even some of the evenings, they don't want to see my place in Bonnegate. Because I have a supermarket in Bonnegate, and you don't want to see my place upstairs, oh, it is full with people accessing the internet, youths that, 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 you know, that want to do their work. And it, it enlightened the community and uplifted the community to, to, a, to, a, to a different standard. You yeah. understand? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, persons are in America and they want to install some cameras for the house. Internet allows them to see to see their, their their home from anywhere in the world, right? Mm -hmm. It also allows the bars you now to access or tap into the online music world, right? It it it, it allows a youth like me who has a supermarket in Bonnegate, providing employment for them in Bonnegate to be able to see what is going on in my point of sale system from anywhere in the world, right? So it's comfort. It allows it allows a house up in Bonnegate like the Hiltons to be on their TV in their house watching Netflix, which they couldn't do any at all. Right? All right. It, it 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 serves a good purpose and I, I have no regrets to installing that internet service and I will keep it going. I will do whatever I can to improve it and to ensure that the community get the best out of it for years to come. All right, good, great, great. No, this is Mr. Byfield. It's something I'm gonna take on every politician about. Last trip I made to Jamaica, I see every house with this black tank on top. What's up with water? And we are supposed to be the land of wood and water. What's up with the whole water system? Can you enlighten our darkness on that, please? All right. I'm going to make a reference. Water, like roads, is being politicized. Mm -hmm. And the reference, I'm going to get back to the water. The reference I'm making is this. I built a bus stop at the free primary school, right? No bus stop was there for years. My mother went there, my father my, and myself, and there was no bus stop. And where the school is situated, the school is down in a valley. So when you normally come yep. up on the road, children normally get wet, right? Because they have nowhere to shelter. So I built one of the biggest bus stops in Jamaica, <laughs> right? At the free primary school. And it's not just a bus stop. It is a bus stop with a, with a very expensive roof on it. I And... I built that bus stop because I know that everybody will benefit from it. 
PNP pick me and JLP pick me benefit from it. And PNP will use it and JLP will use it. The water situation now is being politicized because water is only going to certain areas, right? Like when they're fixing the road, if they have a stretch that mean labor at Levon and 2 PNP, they fix the labor, they skip the PNP, and then they fix the labor. <laughs> right? Like all of them have to Right? So the water situation is being politicized. There is a there is a catchment or a tank up in Arsford, Sunil, that should feed Oxford, Freel, Geddeston, and environs, mm. right? That tank also feeds Port Mara, Bailesville, etc. When I go to Cox Street to, to visit um, Bungar, Peen, them, mm. they always have water. <laughs> when we go to go Bailesville, water always run down my street. <laughs> the pipe. The main pipe run through my land over in Oxford. Mm. My mm. land. And I never have water yet. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> outside of the area, the tank should service has running water the oh, yeah. 24 7. Oh right? my God. We have so much river here. About three years ago, <laughs> I went I went to pouring water and I made, knowing that they will do it because anything me said them do it, you know, anything Mr. Labour do it. And knowing that they would do it, I went there and I would clean up the, the, the catchment at, at pouring water and I took some photos and put it on my page and said, when I win, I will ensure that the water from here is captured and distributed throughout the community of Oxford, Freed and Gettystone, etc. And I commend the, 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 um, the parish council or the NWC for, for going in. And set up a catchment there. It's not serving all of the community because, like I said, it is being politicized. So the only people that serve with this water is Top Street, which is a labor right community, as they claim. Right? When the when when the water source is so great that it can serve Freel, Gettystown, etc., they only put it in one small area, right? And then what politicizing in a way also where the people that are turning on the water they are affiliated to a certain party. Okay. So they turn the water where they want it to go. So the water is there, Sir Garfield. The distribution, the catchment, right, and 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 the lines need to be to be ripped out and put in some modern lines every minute. To say, end of it, you come dig up the road, them, right? We need to. That that, that is a problem. So uh, the the so persons have to resort to black tank now. And then what they do is that politicize it again. They use the black tanks them to, to buy the votes. So you get the prime minister will give a forty thousand black tank now for what? <laughs> <laughs> You should be putting in 40,000 lines so people can have access to the most with water. Mm -hmm. All right. You understand? Because if y'all give me a black tank, y'all tell me not to go buy one, 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 one pump, a pump water mm -hmm. to upstairs. Because people have built one story else again in a Sir Garfield. You understand? People have upstairs now. You understand? <laughs> so we have to pump water from downstairs to upstairs. Yeah. Y'all put the tank way up on top of the roof and then now it over here, over here is to come. It started to degrade the roof and break down the concrete. And then you have to spend more money. Money for some people. Okay. Them water. And, and I'm, I'm not saying it's man made. Water can, we can have issues. We can have lock off issues. We can have mm. drought, etc. We need to plan for those. All right? With so much rainfall throughout the year, where do we do those rainwater? We're not capture them down. We no, don't. Right. Them. Mm -hmm. But then, but then between um, February and April going on here, saying that we have drought. When last year you have so much rainwater, till our Port Mara flood out, till them have ski, jet ski, right through Port Mara. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what are we doing with those waters? So the vision is lacking, Sir Garfield. The vision is lacking. All right. Well, you have some good points. You have some good points. I hope you and your opponent, whichever wins, will be able to carry these out. Now, let's talk a little politics. If you get the nod, right, you'd have to go up against when? one of when when <laughs> all right. When you get the nod, when, I like when. I like the card of it. When you get the nod. You will have to go up against one of Jamaica's best politicians. I like what it's a best politician, not, not necessarily best visionary, but best politician. <laughs> All right, Bobby Montague. How do you plan on taking him on? What areas do you see that you would have to make great inroads in? Because I know right now that it's hard to win without say a recommend support, right? Mm -hmm. So how would how how are you gonna take him on? All right, they say you mustn't reveal all your plans. And ah, true, true, true. true. <laughs> but broad, broad base, you first assess 
your opponent, you analyze his strengths and his weakness, and then you attack his weakness. You don't go to him with his strength, right? All politics is local. People vote for who they see, people vote for who they think can move the community forward. And that is shown in the numbers. The numbers of persons who are staying away from the polls because they believe that either of their opponents weren't good enough to, to move them forward. Western St. Mary has about 38,000 and counting votes on the voters list, right? In the last election, less than 16,000 turnout, right? Or just about 16,000 mm -hmm. turnout. So there is there is at least 20 something thousand more voters there to target that are looking for a different vision, that are looking for a, a, a young person or a youth with the ability to move the parish forward, right? So I, I could tell you a lot of what, I, of what me and my team will do. I know my campaign manager is watching and I know him though I'm to tell you. And we're gonna just keep that <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> All right. Let me ask you. There are people who said two things. People I spoke to said that one, him too young. <laughs> He's too young. And two, he should wait his turn. Mm -hmm. How do you answer that? How do you answer those two statements? One, you're too young, two, wait your turn. If not, no, then when? <laughs> if not, Mr. Byfield. The youth from Oxford, then who? All right. <laughs> Too young. <laughs> uh, in the last election, 2016, not, not the last election, 2016, a number of young persons won on the JP ticket. Mm -hmm. Like Green won, um, Flavor won, uh, Terlang won. Young people never been in politics ever. Mm -hmm. I think this this age thing that they're putting on on youth, saying that we're too young or we're not we're not ready for something, is is just it's just something to try and hold us down. David did stew Goliath against all that. Yes, I saw somebody said that a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> so this this age thing that they're putting on on, on, on a youth is too young. Why am I not too young to run against a council that has been there for the last five terms, nearly 30 years? I want you to ask the persons who are saying that. Why am I not too young to run against the councillor that has been in the game division for the last 30 years and is doing nothing? Why is it all, all, all the polls are saying that I can beat that man as a youth? Why is it that we fight youth so much? Why is it that we, 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 we fight youth from, from, from fulfilling their potential? We have, we have always been given the held as a chance. In Parliament, you have 65 years old, 85 years old, persons who can't talk, persons who are wearing pampas. Why is it that we cannot give youth a chance to represent <laughs> us? Why is it that we cannot, cannot give youth a chance and you sit beside us and guide us based on your experience? Because I like elders, you know, Don't, I'm, I'm not ages, right? I like to be guided. You understand? But when you're going to say I'm too young for this because you feel like you can't control me or you can't tell me what to do because I, I will listen to you and I will tell you that what you're saying is stupid, right? I will not be pushed around. And that's the reason why they say that you're too young. You're not too young because of your abilities. You're not too young because you have money. I'm not too young because I'm bright. I'm not too young because I have wally for following, right? I'm not too young to contest the local election, but I'm too young for this because they feel as if the energy that I have and the enthusiasm that I have and the zeal that I have for St. Mary, when I get the chance to represent, they feel as if how oh, they look and view politics, it will not be in their favor if I should get the post. I am going to rubbish that age thing. I am not too young for that. I am highly experienced. I was a police officer. I'm in mean, the street, right? I walk Smokeyville for three years, straight back and forth. I, I am I am book smart. I read a lot. I might even know more than some of them who attack. Because if 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 they, the persons we attack, tell them to put up themselves. Let them put up themselves. You understand? The father say I call on you, youth, because you're strong. That's what the father say. You know? I call on the youth because we are strong. 
So why are we fighting youth? And I, I, I see it everywhere. You understand? Don't fight the youth, man. Because we are going to fight the youth and then you're going to expect youth to come vote for you. Because if the youth them don't vote for you, you cannot win. If the youth don't vote for you, you can't win. So stop fighting the youth. It is time to give youths a chance. It is time for elders to take them neck out, take them foot out of young people's neck. neck. Sit back. <laughs> Sit back. Guide us. Say to us that, okay, we used to do it this way. You can you can do it this way, but put your twist on it then or modernize it then, right? Most of the people that are saying that I am too young, right? Let me tell you. When I came in, turn out stones like candidate. Them say, don't do this, man, and don't this. I said to them that, listen to me now, listen to this now. You have been using the same strategy to beat the man for four terms. Allow me to use my strategy. And they say, all right, all right, you're young, I don't know nothing. And now they're coming to me and say, where are the man? Where are the man? Where are the well, Everybody are talking about you. Yeah, they're talking about me because, you know what? I am doing it different. And there's no way. Listen. Change is good enough. Once you're changing for the right reason, a lot of people don't like change. They like to they like to preserve the status quo. I don't want to preserve the status quo. I want to overthrow it. I want to demolish that and make youth know that youth can represent we. It is time for youth to get a representative that look like them, that sound like them, that come from a place where them come from, out of the mud. Right? It is time for elders to stop saying that we are too young and we are too inexperienced. That is. That's a rubbish statement, and, and I'm rubbishing that statement about youths are too young. Right? Majority of the youth are, are, are the billionaires in, in the world are youths. Messi is a youth. Ronaldo, a youth. Usain Bolt, a youth. And see Ella's rob him as a youth. All right? Mm -hmm. So stop with this thing about that we are youth, and I, I hate it, man. All right? Because we're not youth, we're not youth when you want us to, 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 to drive voters to the polling station. Or we're not youth when you, when you want to, to get our money. Right to, 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 to contribute to politics, but we are, we are youth. One time, we are not your choice. We are youth, or we're not this, or we're not that thing. You spread all the propagandas. I am rubbish in that statement about youth. I am young, but I am experienced, and I have the right people around me that that, that, that can guide and lead us in the right direction. And there is no I in team, and I, everything that I do, I consult with my team to do them. Every project that I undertake, whether I am building a bus stop, I'm making a community center, I'm building a football field in Gettystone, whatever, whether it's be internet, whether it be re renovating the Jacksiva basic school or putting in Wi Fi in Jacksiva, whatever I am doing as a youth. And tell me, some of these people that are talking, they don't donate anything to their community that they're from. But a youth who is doing so much for the community and I light in the parish in such a way. That persons will benefit. They are saying that I am a youth and I am too young. But I'm not too young to represent at the local level, though. Shame. Right. <laughs> now, jo Giovanni, let me say this. Politics in Jamaica, as we know, can get down and dirty. Would you resort to any of those tactics? Are you willing to categorically say that, look, you would not use underhand tactics in trying to win? Would you run a clean campaign? Sir Garfield, mm -hmm. leaders are winners focus on winning mm -hmm. and losers focus on losing. Mm -hmm. A lot of persons has been calling my name about not being a member of the party, are too young, are too this, are too that. And since... The last three to four weeks that I have been on the ground, and they are calling my name, I have gained about 10,000 new followers across my platforms. Right? Persons who are listening to them with their undanded tactics and trying to, you know, to figure out for themselves who this youth really is. I, I don't intend to call my opponent name. I don't intend to. To, to, to spread any propaganda on him internally or externally. I don't intend to get into the mode with anybody because I always tell my team, if politics won't allow me to make the change that I will make, I want to make, I would gladly step aside and use faith and 10 dedicated person and make that change. So when all is said and done, if they want to, to take it to that level, 
I am not going to that level with them. I am going to educate them, enlighten them, and bring them up to my level and teach them and show them the way as a youth. As a youth. So if, let's say, hypothetically, your opponent for the, the PNP nomination should win, mm -hmm. would you throw your support behind him? Yes, definitely. We're in one party and I'm a team player, like I said. And if I if I would stand aside, right? And 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 if I stand aside, my supporters will stand aside. And I, and, and we want to win. I did there is no second place in politics. Right. Mm -hmm. So if he is selected, I intend to give him my full support. And I tell him that every single time I have a conversation with him. And and when I win, I intend for him to give me his full support. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, listen, I think I think in the next week or so I should have him on. You know what? I admire the way you went through tonight without even calling his name. I, I, I admire that. I didn't want to get his name out there. All publicity is good publicity. It's true. But uh, mm -hmm. I want to talk with him next week and see if I can get him on the program. And then maybe even further down the road, have both of you on one night and you, you two debate each other. Because from what... I spoke to him, yes, and he is a gentleman also, just like yourself, very well spoken, uh, says good things about you, just like you say about him. But I'd love to have both of you on. Giovanni, it's been a wonderful time here chatting with you. We have gone over an hour now, and I'm sure we could do another hour. And I know if I ask you to come back on again, I know you're going to come on again. I know it. Next time, next time I'm gonna have I'm gonna open it up so people can call in. Yes, I could yes, do that. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Peeny, respect, man. Respect. <laughs> yes, Baga. You know, we have a general already, sir. Peeny. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, 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 make sure everything is even right down the middle right. and if i can get somebody from the other party on too fine i'm sure bobby would well, jump the chance to come on to the other party no sir garfield eh? i'm not afraid to the other party no 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 no, no, no that's you i will be i'm willing to talk to anybody at any oh, time i know, I know. I'm I'm <laughs> I know. but giovanni i want to thank you for coming on i like your enthusiasm i like the vibe i like the the willingness to get down in the community and work and from the people i've spoken to that's what they all tell me this is a man of the people a man who is down there every day with us i hear that you've been to more funerals and grave digging than john reed both and that <laughs> seems to be the way you you know you move with people and get to know them and they get to know you them. Have to support the people in their time yeah. of, of morning man that is true but like i said i want to hear from the other gentleman i want to see how close you both are in your philosophy and your beliefs and i believe westerns regardless of who wins i believe western st mary is gonna be on the up and up i believe that person is gonna be good for western st mary so brother i give you the chance to close out go ahead say anything you want to say to your to your listeners yeah man i just want to say to everybody who tune in you know much respect and thanks and anything that you you feel we can do to uplift the community any support that you can give from the diaspora to uplift the community our local you know do it you understand we we i want to bring as much persons back into the community or into the parish to, to help us push and uplift the parish i thank you anything that you you think you know i can do to assist any area in the community i want you to reach out to me on my facebook page giovanni byfield our instagram byfield underscore j o u all right um, you can, you know, definitely read Sir Garfield to get my number. And, you know, I look forward to the support from each and everyone, right? Because no man is an island and no man stands alone. So together we stand divided, we fall. So let us all, as persons who have love and respect for the parish of St. Mary, come together and redevelop the parish and build the parish back into what it, it used to be. Respect, Sir Garfield, for having me, and I look forward to, to speaking with you again, General. Yeah, man, and Mr. Byfield, I want to say thank you very much. And for all the listeners, 
for those who watch it tonight live, those who participated, fine. For those who are going to see it on the replay maybe later on the week, please put in your comments. And this won't be the end. I need to get Mr. Byfield's opponent on, and I'll be having in another two weeks, I'll be having Senator Floyd Morris and Mr. Omar Newell, because we are going to sort this thing out for Central St. Mary also. Listen, man, I'm a St. Mary man, born in St. Mary, born in another Bay hospital. I want to see the parish move forward. To me, there's no place like St. Mary. And to have people like Giovanni, who's willing to represent the area, fine. So, Giovanni, thanks for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for supporting Rock the Mic, and I'm happy to be back. So, Giovanni, peace out, my brother. Take care. God be with you. Okay, man? Peace.